Yep. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to DBAMA. Um, today, we'll be hosting Marcus Alve, who works at uh, Percona, and he's going to be covering uh, BCC, which is uh, my BPF uh, compiler. What was it again? I'm sorry. Can you hear me? BPF compiler collection. <laughs> collection. That's it. Um, and we're all really excited to take a closer look at this. Uh, I personally have not um, seen this in use. So as a reminder to everyone, um, questions are very welcome. Um, if you don't want to speak up, uh, feel free to post them in the chat channel and uh, we would be happy to ask those questions for you. Um, but yeah, this is this is the kind of um, this is the kind of place where you can just speak up and ask your questions as well. So don't hesitate. Um, and with that said, Marcos, uh, feel free to take it away. Right. Thank you very much, please. Uh, well, welcome everybody. Uh, the talk is going to showcase um, BCC and the newer BBF trays. Uh, they are both uh, front ends to simplify uh, the use of uh, BBF, of eBBF. Um, as I was telling Liz, eBBF, um, it's a virtual machine inside the kernel uh, that basically allows us to run uh, code basically at nearly x86 speed. So there's nearly no latency. Uh, in, in executing the ex, some extra um, ex, uh, instructions, like there will be no added latency, but every instruction takes time. That is what I, I meant to say. Um, it's important to understand this. Uh, it allows you to trace very much anything, uh, but you have to know what you want to trace. And that is like the uh, difficult part. So, you know, like, we will uh, look at an example of how we can trace uh, the inners of MySQL, but that's because I know the MySQL code uh, and I knew where to look at. So you know, you have to know where to look at. That's the important part. Um, here I have a, a BPA, um, sorry, a sysbench. Let me show you the line. It's it's a simple sysbench. You know, it's all in. Uh, in memory, bunch of threads, uh, and nah, nothing special, you know, small range. So it's IO bound on the commits, one would expect, right? So it's given like 10, 20k uh, transactions, um, and then all of a sudden, I something happens. Basically, the, the, the case I was trying to emulate um, is that of uh, instance in AWS where you run out of credits in your EBS volume. Um, sadly, emulating IO latency in Linux is not so easy unless you are in a virtual machine, and I was not in a virtual machine, so uh, this is the best I could do. It's a DM, and it's going to add a lot of latency. Um, you will see transactions are plummeting, you know, like. All right. So then the natural thing is you arrive, you look at MySQL. And well, they are all still in commit. So um, you start looking at it, right? And, and like, if it was not your server, if you didn't know the server, you know, you would do ISTAT, DMX, whatnot. Um, and you see, you know, two disks, they are active. They, one of them has notoriously more write weight. I could go there and just take a look, but because we want to show the tools. <laughs> Uh, what we're going to start looking is the I.O. stack is divided through the file system, uh, the um, volume managers, and later the block devices, and later the SCSI drivers. So, you know, the commit has to go through all of those. 
So what you can do and what is interesting in this case is you can look at the file system and at the, bi at, at the BO latency, at the block IO latency separately. So that's what we are going to do. Um, there's a set of tool called BO. Um, some you will see duplicate. Those that have BT are implementations using BPF trace. Um, and I'm going to show you the code in a minute so you can take a look at how beautiful BPF trace is. So the first thing you do is try to um, look at BO top. Oops, BO top. As of the options, basically how many the top, top you want to show and no clear. I use the no clear always um, because I want to see cumulative output and look back in time. Takes a few seconds to start because it has to um, to compile. Every time you start running, it compiles the bytecode for the BPF program. So it, you, you will always see that it takes some time. The more probes you attach, the more time it will take to compile and the more checks it's going to do. So um, we can see a lot of writes going to NVMe. O N one, um, and then a few to NVMe three. Well, not a few, but uh, more scattered through different um, processes, not from MySQL D. Uh, so then I will check the latency. So this is sorry, giving you the command, um, the type of operation that was going on. Uh, major and minor, so you can find it in the partitions. Uh, you know, you can do it. Okay. Partitions. It should be the red 255, uh, 4, 255, uh, 259, 5, etc. So uh, it's telling you what disk it's on, uh, how much uh, IO operations, how many kilobytes, and the average milliseconds latency. Latency looks good. Uh, from here, um, video latency lets you see more detailed. It, it has more options. For example, you can see only the disk or only the operations. We're going to take a look at both. So um, you can see the disks on one side and the operations on the other. You cannot uh, aggregate on both. So you have to choose one. You, I just simply ramble. Um, I'm going to do it in milliseconds. Um, I also want to see the queue, uh, the, the amount of time that, or include the amount of time that was spent in the OS queue. Uh, then I want to see the disk, and it's going to split it through the disk. Uh, and I didn't put an interval, so it's just going to give me a long wait. Um, two, five. So interval of two seconds, five times. Um, it's hard to see the edge of this. It would be nice if it printed out some delimiter, right? <laughs> okay. Um, but basically, anyway, in this case, uh, we see all the latency, block IO latency uh, through all the devices, loops. Um, looks good, right? It doesn't look like a problem. Um, and we can also take a look at the operations. Uh, and so this is going to split based on the uh, block IO operations it does. So, for example, a block operations is a, is a write that it also has the sync flag. Uh, it's a write that also has the idle, the no merge, and the sync flags. So every write has flags. And what this guy is doing is using the flags to uh, as the key to aggregate. Uh, again, we can uh, see mo most of them are idle sync write. Um, these are all basically F sync. <laughs> these are all doing F syncs um, in one way or another. And um, again, they, they don't look problematic, right? Like under one millisecond, like that shouldn't be the problem. So. The next uh, thing we will look at is the volume manager. 
but I don't have LVM here. Um, I just have some VM here. And so I'm not going to look at the volume manager because it doesn't make any sense in this case. So the next part is looking at um, EX, e, um, EXT4 or XFS, depending on which of the volumes were being affected. I saw one of them was NVMe ON1. So I'm going to take uh, a look at that one first. Then I'm going to take a look. Uh, I didn't saw any on N1. It was 3N1 and ON1. And oh, some in 2N1 as well. But like basically, there's very little in there. And 2S1. Uh, it's, it's, okay, it's the root partition. Okay, got it. That should have very much no traffic. Um, <clears throat> so again, next next stop is uh, XFS, and again you have one that lets you find the slower operations and then a distribution of latency. So let's start with the slow operations, or no, let's start with the latency XFS um, is, and also has very few options. Um, just the PID and the, the, the type of, if you want, if you don't specify milliseconds, it's going to give you microseconds. Uh, and also, I like to have a timestamp so I know when things happen. It. Um, some tools sometimes do not work if you give them a PID or if you give them some filtering and they will work without the filtering. I really have not looked at at the code for every tool. I look at that some, fixed it one or two uh, that had funny output errors, but you know, didn't look at the filtering problem once. But if you notice a tool that is not working when you specify a filter, do take it out because that will do it M many times at least. Uh, and then I want to apply oh. the, there you go. It should take two seconds to give you more. <laughs> like in this case, <laughs> I, I I thought of remember this was one of the uh, tools that had that issue. So this guy is giving us um, latency distribution uh, for the different operations on the file system. And we can see read, writes, and opens look good, but that the F syncs do have a B modal distribution where like, you know, like 30% of the transactions or the F syncs do complete in under one millisecond, the rest take between four and seven milliseconds. Um, so at this point, you know, like we can tell it's it's on that, um, the, it's the F syncs that are giving us uh, grief. Um, now, the nicest part, you know, like, okay, these are all ready to make, ready to go tools. Um, but I believe the nicest is you can actually write things very easy, very, very easy with BPS trace. For example, um, BPS trace dash E. And then here E is execute, of course. And then you start. Uh, with a probe name. So, for example, I can do kprobe um, think range, I think. Let me double check that name. I have it, I have it in my notes. <laughs> yeah, I have a question, Marcus, maybe just yeah. before you get to that. In the yeah. distribution, you've got zero to one, and then you've got two to three. If something was like 1.99, where would it end up? Zero, zero one, yeah, yeah. In that case, if you if you are hesitant about the resolution, you take out the milliseconds, and you're going to see it in microseconds, and it's going to have, um, you know, like now you can see all those yeah. that were under one millisecond, they were distributed like this. That, that's sense? great. Yeah, I, I think like one millisecond might be not uh, fine grained enough. In, uh, some no, yeah, yeah, no, no. yeah, yeah. You know, for, for the demo, I, I thought, but yeah, absolutely. If you want to find outliers, you will do this. 
you know, part of the demo I was trying to put together was to send um, these um, histograms into Gplot. Like I have a Gplot 3D chart that you can actually, actually out of feed all the time. Uh, I never got to, to transfer the output of this into the stream that was feeding that chart. But basically, um, what, what is lovely about this and, and what is what I believe is the future of these tools is you can have them running on your data center all day long. Like you could have flame graphs generated continuously. Like, you know, like just sample and profile all the system all the time at nine Hertz or at, you know, 49 Hertz, something rather low, low impact. Look, if, if I do that, uh, 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 no. I want to go back to my screen. Why are you doing this to me? Ah, there we go. <laughs> I had the wrong short key. So if you do um, profile, oops, you have to do profile. Profile is basically what we used to do with perf record, right? Like you can um, record the stacks, you know, frequency, how many stacks I want to count, or for how much time I want to do it. Uh, which process I want to do, or which thread, uh, thread ID I want to do. And then if I want uh, only user space or kernel space, or if I don't specify any, then it will be both. Um, and look at this. You can actually do it for uh, your um, C group. So you, if you know the C group where one of your Docker instances is running, you can just, you know, give the... Um, pass it to, to the, the C group uh, PMAP. I, I haven't tested this, so I, I will need to find a way to actually obtain the uh, BPF map for the C group. But again, you can do at the container level as well. But basically, if you look at the transaction, let me fix my latency. So, uh, it's gonna make more sense. Come on. It should be recovering. Okay, there you go. 20k transactions is very close. Now, if we do uh, profile at uh, 49 hertz um, for five seconds, and please give, give it to me in folded format. Yeah, that's it. And, and oh yeah, and I want dash p. Five has to be at the end. It's a positional parameter. There you go. Oh, shit. I, I should have sent that to a file. It's a better idea. Um, so, you know, you, you can have this running all day long. Look, it's perhaps it's going to have like, I don't know, 2% impact, 1% impact, whatever. You know, like if it, it should not matter to you because the output is going to give you so useful. That and, and having it running there all the time allows you to answer past questions without waiting for the problem to happen again, you know, which is what happens to us all the time. Like we see a CPU problem, we have PMM there running, everything beautiful. But then when we look at the problem, it's like, yeah, I will need to get a, a trace, a profiling of the CPU. Um, and this you can do with, with the output here, like straight from that, you can do plane graph, plane graph. Um, and you know, I, I, I could share my other window. I, I, I will need to share my browser. If you want to see the flame graphs later, I'll show you. But basically, you know, it works straight. You don't have to do any folding or anything fancy. It works straight. And again, you can leave this running all day. Same thing for the latency tools. You know, you can leave them. Uh, you can have your um, disk trace it all the time. And even if you had like somewhat large impact, you could, let me show you now, I'm, let me show you the BPS trace line I was going to show you. Um, so BPS trace dash E. So first thing you put is a probe of some type. Um, could be a trace point, a kernel probe, um, a kernel return. So it's a function from the kernel, a kernel that is returning. Um, or a user, or a user return probe, or uh, 
could be other things like hardware counters and uh, performance events, uh, software, software performance events. Um, so how to get the list is L, BBF trace dash L will give you the list. So you can start looking at things. So now next to four, XFS, so whatever. Uh, range thing. What is, what is it? Uh, approve. Uh, I think it's. I think it's this one. Uh, let me break my latency again. And um, so you do the. the oh, let me show you another tool. When you're unsure, like you see all these probes, and you know, like which one is this guy using? Okay, you can do this funk count. And then you do the probe and you say, sync. So, you know, I, I want to see if there are any. Hmm? Like this? He doesn't like this? Mm, I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> Um, so you let it run for you know a few seconds, and it's just counting how many times those functions are executing. And the only one that executed was that one. So now I can be sure if I trace this, I'm gonna get results, and it's likely what is going on, right? Um, so now I can do um, the trace. Oh, sorry, except t success, success, sync. Um, then you can put a filter. So this is your probe, right? Like again, you have the probe here. The probe can be one of four types, uh, user or kernel, and it can be static or dynamic. Um, and then again, you have all those hardware counters and, and the special software events. Uh, but basically, the probe, then a filter. For example, I'm going to say com mysql uh, You could also use the PID. Uh, you could use whatever. You can actually set parameters throughout your BPF, BPF trace program and uh, use them later in, in the conditions. So you can use your own variables as a condition. Um, and then you do the action. And in between uh, bra um, curly braces, you do the action. In this case, I'm going to say at... Um, at TID. So TID is one of many special variables variables that are available in BBF trace. Um, I'll show you a list of the other ones in a moment. Basically, uh, it, it has the thread ID, of course. Um, and it creates the act will create a map, basically a dictionary, an array, a vector, whatever you want to call it, uh, that is keyed in this case by the thread ID. Uh, so I'm just going to do thread ID equals um, sex. This is another of those special variables. Um, and what I'm doing here is saying, okay, whenever you come across the probe XFL's file sync, um, you know, um, do that, that is being executed by the MySQL D command. Uh, save the current time in, in nanoseconds to this uh, map key. Um, actually, I just realized that, that trace points do not have a return point. So I'm just going to be, this is not going to do what I want. So I'm going to start all over again with this K probe. K XFS sync. Okay, pro. Hmm? I give you a word that can, that actually works. Just let me what do we have on funk count. This should work. Okay, pro. Yes. 
Come. That's okay. Without nothing, just like that. Yep. So again, it's only using the first one thing. Huh. No, give me a second. Um, the good part is you can always resort to reading out someone else's code. Um, is PT. He's using probes, I'm sure. <laughs> there you go, XFS file sync and a red probe. Okay, so we're gonna do the same he's doing, but we're gonna do it ourselves. So you can actually learn how it's done. Um, again, that does, and then we open another one, a red probe. Um, for the same thing, with the same filter, oops. And then the following action is uh, the latencies are derived. You, you don't get a latency from tracing a function. You get from tracing in, in between two points. That's why also you have to know the, the code a bit because you have to know where the code jumps from one place to another. So if you know how it jumps from one place to another and what data you can trace on both points that will allow you to, to make it a single thread, you know, to make sure you're tracing a single thing, then you can, you can derive the latency of an operation. In this case, we're going to use, um, I, will add the, I will do uh, latency equals, um, nanoseconds for current timestamp minus uh, T0 for the TID that is executing this return probe. Because now I am attaching to the return probe. This code I'm writing now is for that. Um, and then what you do is you create a map that is uh, latency and you do equals his latency. And then you can do interval, and you can specify in hertz, cycles, nanoseconds, microseconds, seconds, whatever you want. Simple uh, seconds. So you, you do the unit, and then you do the, um, the amount you want. You could also use a filter. I'm not going to do any filter here. I'm just going to uh, print, uh, print the map, and then clear, uh, clear it. And I will also print, um, I never remember what's that again, Jessica. Okay. Um, time, 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 Okay, it's connected out for some reason. And it works. And it actually tells us the truth. Look, we still see the bimodal uh, distribution due to the bad latency, right? So, again, um, the, the trick is you have to know the code um, and trace and be able to correlate things. Here, I'm able to correlate through the thread ID. Um, and I did another example, and um, boom. no, sorry, that is, and basically it did the same. I, I trace it, but I trace it on the uh, Cisco FC instead of the XFS. Um, basically same trick, you know, I kept a counter here and I started recording the latency. Uh, then I derived the latency of when, the, when it's exiting. Here it's enter F-sync, here is exit F-sync. 
I, I build the histogram, and then I delete this entry from the map. Um, and then look, look what you can do. I am tracing a function from MySQL itself. And, and here is when, you know, like people like us who know the MySQL code uh, better than most should be able to start building interesting tools for our monitoring systems. Um, and literally, you know, this uh, is looking at the user probe that is from this binary. I have to use the Manglet uh, function name. You can get this with bpf trace dash bpf trace dash l and the binary name. I'll show you in a second. Um, and then you you return. So when this function returns, it's going to do it. It doesn't have to be two functions. It's the same one on the return point. Make sense, Mark? Mark, it's just as a question uh, for another hypothetical example to confirm it's possible. Yeah, Could you let's wait. Uh, measure from the MySQL functions you think to get like how many items went in the group commit window? Wow, well, yeah, we have to find the code that it's accumulating them, but absolutely you can. Because again, you you know, um, here I, I am using uh, TID to trace things, but in all honesty, I was trying to use the argument that comes with, um, with trans commit, which is the thread uh, object. But I could not find, perhaps Marcelo is here, perhaps Marcelo could tell me how I should cast argument one of transcommit to actually uh, get the thread ID out of it. Because, you know, you can, um, let me show you one that is uh, simple. Look, BPF trace uh, dash L, um, B, let's see what we did earlier today. It was bad. Ah. Uh, what was that? It's a, okay. So BPF trace dash LV, and then you do your function name. There you go. You know, it's telling you, I, I'm going to see the device and the I node number. So if you write a probe like, um, And you could do, uh, let's see, uh, at distribution for dev for args dev for um, uh, so. And then I do interval. <laughs> Second one. Uh, and you can simply do exit here. And it's if you don't have if you have some maps you have not cleared and have not printed. What you don't like. You have to cast the. Hmm, why? This should be easy. Let me check the function again. Um, how can I cast it? <laughs> Let's see if the I know, you know, like. But basically, you can get the arguments. Again, you have to know the code. You have to know how to cast the stuff and, and spend some time looking at the distributions for um, at, at the structures for the things you want to print out. You know, like without knowing the code, you're not going to go too far with this. Make sense? Like, oh, Jesus, let me find an easier function. <laughs> um, it makes sense. Um, is there like a GitHub repo where there are MySQL examples though? Um, or are these just uh, um, part of Marcus's uh, no, private? No, yeah. like, look, there is one. Um, look, 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 find uh, root dash name. I see. Oh, star. 
No, not that. <laughs> uh, not like that. You think? And yeah, here, this one. Again, look, it, this guy is using, he, he's using, um, he's intercepting dispatch command and he's extracting argument one from struct command, you know, which is the query. Look. Bah. This is running? Hmm. Mm, something is not working for him. I can only guess this patch command is never entering. Hmm. Let me see if I can get the manglet function. Again, you know, if you don't know what you're looking and if you don't know a bit of C, uh, C, C++, it's a hell. You know, it's, it's, it's worse than being blind. Like, it's, you're blind and, and, <laughs> and totally, like, totally lost. Um, BBF trace dash LB, and then you do, again, that uh, opt, sorry, uh, root and SQL, root opt and SQL, constant 30, B in my SQL, B, um, bracket, uh, And there you go. Um, and what was the function he was using? It was dispatch command. Okay. Let's do dispatch. All right. Let's see if one of if this guy works then. The path is correct, so. And the stars, they should have matched. Um, and, and I'll show you one more trick that is rather important, which is after a probe, you can specify how many, uh, the, the rate, the sampling rate. So, you know, if I want to only capture every one every 1,000, I would put 1,000 after that probe. So that is important to be able to trace high frequency stuff. Otherwise, that is going to kill you. Uh, I will show you uh, some commands that take a, a very large toll on the workload when you run them. Uh, they are doing stuff like, you know, tracing every commit or tracing, I mean, every uh, memory allocation or tracing every block IO operation, like everything, you know? So that is going to, to take uh, a noticeable toll on the workload. Let's see if this works. Yeah, if it doesn't have a theory, why? But let's see if it works. Yeah. I see you're starting to love it. Am I running? Yeah. Oh, no, look. Something evil happened here. Did they run out of disk space? Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it was working my before. theory. But, uh, my theory was because uh, Syspench is using prepared statements, it might not use the com query. But uh, looks like you found it. I know there's no space left on the bias, and I want to fix it, buddy. Uh, <laughs> I'll just you know wipe the, wipe out a few of them. Uh, yeah. um. I should have checked this. I, I've left this thing running for days. I've been running this bench for days. I'm sorry, guys. So look, anyway, we can see that the query is coming up now, right? Um, this one should show a, a decent amount of, of latency in a moment when it actually finishes. So, and again, the interesting part in there was, um,
that it's, it's again taking an argument for me for me that's like the one thing you have to learn is the most valuable tools you can build are out of arguments and return values you can also take the return value of the functions and the probes so and, and th with those is that you actually aggregate get interesting data to aggregate like again if you know if you, if you know top of your head um where the group commit um way starts and, and you could trace you could do it like this um let me let me let me um I, I know he has one i know there is an example where but basically you ask it if you can count how many things went into a group commit we need to find the function sending it to it so you know again you will start with uh oh, look at this <laughs> that that's interesting to see you know and, and it works look 25 seconds, 25 seconds. So kosher, it looks kosher. Um, uh, this. So what I would do is grab uh, group. Mm. SQL DPAD states they work uh, they committed no no you know we will have to dive but again and and this is the pain if you don't know what to trace it's meaningless like it's nothing so it, it's good if you know your your software or if you know the kernel but if you don't know the kernel and you don't know your software you're like totally out of luck um Again, the, the one I, I wrote, it's a very simple, it does nothing. Um, ah. So I was just looking at the um, uh, dispatch code. I think it's com statement execute that it'll count as from sysbench. So it'll probably use prepared statements. It won't become query. Oh, uh, but no, look, it's, it's running now. Um, where is it? So your your purge binary log command count is called query, but I, I don't. No, no, I, I never started the sysbench again. Okay. That, that would have been a good idea. That. Yummy. <laughs> so <laughs> you can see it actually. You, you need to also figure out like if you want to trace everything because you can do that kind of stuff. Um. So so commit yep. used the statement interface, and it looks like a selected, but most of your queries are not. They're using uh, prepared okay, statements. Yeah, yeah. OK, I see what you mean. Yeah, probably you need to trace another function to see all of the functions. OK, yeah. We can do that. Just a quick heads up, but we are seven minutes away from uh, okay. the hour. So if there's anything like super No, yeah, th there is one last thing, um, which is so when when i found when i finally um decided you know like okay i i do believe it's xfs and and you know like that everything is oops sorry just one second let me find my notes as i have the commander uh, what is it <laughs> So the, the other nice thing you can do once you have um, a suspect is uh, build a flame graph. And again, this allows you to build very easily off CPU flame graphs, um, which usually for these kind of problems that are related to Waits outside the user space. Uh, okay, Marcelo just told us where to look for being like, like we can stay, you know, like we can make this a lab immediately after we finish. <laughs> so hang on there, Marcelo. Um, so I will do 
off wave time, off wave time, um, and I will do it for. That. Let me show you the options. It lets you just do it for things that took more than a certain amount of time. So we're gonna do that, you know, like we're gonna trace things that took more than, let me make it horrible. So, uh, set, uh, latency. Okay, and we should see this gets even worse. And so I'm gonna do dash M uh, and it's microseconds, so I'm gonna do M. 1500, and I'm going to do uh, hold it, and I'm going to do uh, PAD. And for five seconds, and then I could actually pipe this to flame graph, and I realized that. But okay, sometimes um, like it happens when you do uh, TCP dump. TCP dump is actually based on BPF trace, uh, on BPF, I mean. Um, and sometimes it drops packets. Sometimes it just cannot keep up with the rate and it drops packets. Uh, so in this case, it did a bit, nothing grabbed it, it seems. And then I will do plain graph, plain graph, and Right. And let me stop sharing this screen. How do I stop sharing this screen? Let's stop presenting. Can I, can I go back to presenting if I stop presenting? Okay, present now. Select window. This one now. Right, and then I do and here <laughs> you can see my CPU um, is on the top, and it, this stack goes down, and then you start from the bottom, and then this stack goes up, and basically. Uh, here, the problem was this, Futex wave Q, me. And it literally is because the DM I created, if, if you saw in the demo before, uh, I had created a de um, device mapper that had a delay rule. And that delay rule would put things through the Q, the, a Futex Q that is, you know, just waiting there. So that's basically, um, the end of the demo, like showing how uh, tracing the on, only the slow ones I was able to correlate um, with those. It's not even waiting on IO. We saw that it was pure. Um, it was pure file system level, and the files it, it, it's doing it right there. So that's the end of it. I'm not sure we have time for many questions, but if you have any, shoot, and I'll try to answer. I have a quick question. <laughs> The yeah. dropping packets thing, uh, is there some methodology to that? I assume it's so that it doesn't slow down the system. There is a max, there is a buffer in a, a ring buffer in the kernel, okay. and it has a limit. And then usually you will um, have some uh, BPF, BPF trace itself oh, imposes some limits, but it, it's just to avoid you shooting yourself in the foot. But yeah, BPF, the kernel virtual machine itself has a limited buffer in kernel. That answers the question? It does, thank you. Cool, cool. Marcelo, you look bored. <laughs> Glad to hear. All right, um, well, if no more questions, yeah. Let's wrap it up. Let, let me hide. <laughs> oh, yeah. If there's no further questions.
uh, yeah, we can wrap this up and I'll stop recording. Marcus, if you can just stick around a little bit after we stop recording, maybe there, you know, there, there always tend to be a couple more questions. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll wrap up this recording. Thank you so much, Marcus. For, uh, it was my pleasure. I hope, I hope you guys like it. Absolutely.